Hi, everyone. This lesson is for geometry students. This is a chapter five quiz one review. So let's get started. Uh, additionally, you can follow along on Canvas, which has a practice quiz uh, that goes along with the with this video. So the first question would be, if the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90 right triangle is six, uh, the length of one of, find, what is the length of one of the lakes? So if I know that this is a 45, 45, 90, right off the bat, I know that these two sides are congruent. I know that's a right angle. I know that whatever this angle is, it's the same as that. So therefore, if I know that the sum of these two angles is 90, then these both have to be 45 degrees. Um, the hypotenuse is six. So option one that I could use is I could say, I don't know what the lengths of the sides are, but I do know that they're the same. So I could say x squared plus x squared is equal to six squared, in which I'd have two x squared is equal to 36. And then I would divide by two, I get x squared equals 18. And then I take the square root of both sides to solve for x. And I would get uh, think perfect squares, right? So you'd have the square root of nine times the square root of two. And that's gonna be three root two. So that's what X equals. Now, keep in mind that um, this is a special right triangle. And what that means also is that there is, a, there is a little trick here. There's actually two tricks. Number one, we know that this is X, this is X, and then therefore this has to be X root two, all right? And so, what I could do is I could say six is equal to x root two. And I would divide by do, divide both sides by root two. And I would get x is equal to six divided by root two, which for which, by the way, this also is a separate question on your um, exam, where you would be dividing by root two, which we were going to what's called rationalize the denominator in order to get rid of that root on the denominator. So we're going to have six root two all over root two times root two, which is two. And then I would fact or cancel, right, factor. And then that would be um, three root two, and that equals X. So I, I have a couple of options of how to solve this problem. The last option is to use the little trick, the, like the little shortcut. The rule is to take whatever value here. If it's not, if, if, if this was like five root two, I know the lengths of the sides are five and five. But if this is not set up into a root two way, of looking at it, what you would do is the rule is to divide by two and multiply by root two. So whatever this value is, I plug that here and I'd say, well, six divided by two, root two. Six divided by two is three, and my answer would be three root two for the lengths of each of the sides. For this problem here, I wanna solve for AB. AB happens to be over here. So I know that I have the opposite side, and I also know that I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. If you remember the mnemonic, that's the SOHCAHTOA, if you remember that value, you know that sine of an angle is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So that's what that's going to use. So you would say sine of theta, the theta always goes after the word, is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So if you, you usually put yourself at the angle, there you are. And so from here, that's gonna be sine of 57 is equal to the opposite side, which is 20, over the hypotenuse. Now, it, there's no way around that. If the hypotenuse is x, you have to do an additional step. So not only do you have to cross multiply, but you also have to divide. So here we go. We're gonna go x times sine of 57 is equal to 20. We're gonna divide both sides by the quantity sine of 57. So x equals 20 divided by sine of 57 degrees. And I do expect you to use your calculators. I want to remind you that there is uh, another calculator on Desmos. That's the Desmos Scientific Calculator. So there, we've been using like Desmos Graphing Calculator, but we're going to do Desmos Scientific Calculator. So look for that. So, um, so I'm going to use this on my calculator. I'm going to go 20 divided by, and remember, if you don't put this parenthesis here, you will get the wrong answer. Absolutely, um, because your calculator will go 20 divided by sine, and then it'll times 57, and you don't want that. So if you use the parentheses, then it will automatically give you the right answer. So we're going to go 20 divided by parentheses, sine of 57, close the parentheses, you end up getting 23.8. So we've got 
four, which is just 23.8. And then box that up, that's your answer. Okay, next problem, an equilateral triangle. So we have three sides that are the same. That's what an equilateral triangle means. Has height or altitude of 15. So this is my height, which is 15. Uh, what is the length of one side? Well, for it to be an equilateral triangle, what that means is that all my angles have to be the same. They're all 60. So this is 60, that's 60 over here. But this one, because I've cut this in half, because it's equilateral, this cuts it exactly in half. And now it's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So you have, again, options, right? Okay, option number one, because it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, it does have a little shortcut. All right, so the shortcut to doing this is opposite the 30 is, let's say, A. So let me draw another triangle. So if I had another triangle and I said this was 30 and this was 60, opposite the 30 degrees is A, opposite the 90 is twice that, and opposite the 60 is what we call A root 3. So we are given this value of 15 that equals 15 that equals a root 3. So one of my options is to set 15 equal to a root 3. So we're going to divide by root 3 and I'm going to get 15 divided by root 3. Now of course again like the previous problem you're not going to leave a root on the denominator and so you're going to multiply by root 3 over root 3. And so what that's going to give me is 15 root 3 over 3 because root 3 times root 3 is 9 root 9 which is 3. 3 is going to cancel and I'm going to get 5 root 3 as the length of um, this side be you know be careful because I just solve for a and a being across from a 30 degree angle gives me this length right here of 5 root 3 all right now remember an equilateral triangle has all three sides the same so this whole length here is going to be another 5 root 3 on this side so x would actually be 10 root 3 all right, now let's say I'm taking the quiz and 10 root 3 isn't an option. I can still multiply 10 by root 3 and get an answer. Now the second way that I would have solved this problem, besides using the special right triangles, is to solve it using um, sine, cosine, or tangent. And so I would actually put myself at one of the angles, and I don't care which one. Uh, there I am. And I'm going to put myself at the 60 degree. Well, I do care which one other than you're never going to put yourself at the right angle. You either choose 60 or 30. And if you're here and I know that this is the opposite side and this is the hypotenuse, I'm going to use sine again. And I would say sine of 60 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. I'm going to cross multiply. I get x times sine of 60 degrees is equal to 15. I'm going to divide both sides by sine of 60. So I get x equals 15 divided by sine of 60 degrees. And so x is approximately, if I'm going to do that on my calculator, um, I'm going to get x is approximately, let's see, 15 divided by sine of 60. I wonder if I have that available. Let me see. Oh, there we go. I can do that. So let's do it on here. So let's go, um, let me make sure you guys can all see this. All right, so we would go 15 and divide it by, and then remember I said use parentheses, and so that would be sine, here's sine, of 60, 60, close the parentheses, okay, and enter. And just make sure you're in degrees. It has to say degrees on there somewhere so that you know that you're, you know, not using radians because that's going to give you a different answer. So my answer is about 17.3. So uh, let's see here. So my answer is about 17.3. And so this might be the answer that I find on my, uh, like my multiple choice. But remember what I said, I also got 10 root 3. So what you would then do is just verify, hold on, 10, and let's do root 3. So I'm going to go second root and then 3. And this is about 17.3 also. So either way, you should be able to get the same answer regardless of how you do that. Okay, all right, so the next problem is these, like I said, you're going to have to simplify um, these problems. And I think on the test, these are um, on the quiz, these are uh, fill in the blank. So you do have to like write these down and fill in the answers. So root 28, always think perfect squares when you just have a single 10, something like this. Um, I'm going to think uh, 4. This is going to be root 4 
times uh, root 7. Root square root of 4 is 2, so this becomes 2 root 7. For any other time that you have a root on the denominator, you're not going to leave that root on the denominator. Now, sometimes, though, you can cancel roots, but not this one because they're not the same. But if I had, like, let's say, root 15 divided by the square root of 5, the roots can cancel with roots. Just numbers can't cancel with roots. But roots can cancel with roots. And this answer, if this was, like, one of my, options, my questions, would just be the square root of 3, and then I would be done. But for these, you can't cancel a root into just a regular number. It would have to be another root. So you do what's called rationalizing the denominator and multiply by 1. And the 1 in the form of whatever the denominator is. Because multiplying by 1 is not changing the problem. And because this is an expression, I'm not changing the problem. So I have 12 root 3 over the square root of 9, which is 3. 3 divides into 12, so my final answer would be 4 root 3. For this problem here, these don't cancel, so I'm going to try to cancel on the top and the bottom first before I rationalize the denominator to get rid of that root 2. So on the top, I do know that that's going to be root 9 times the square root of 5. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, so on the numerator, I have 3 root 5. And then I still have this root 2 on the denominator. So now I'm going to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root 2 over root 2. And remember, roots get multiplied with roots. Numbers get multiplied with numbers, meaning this 3 gets multiplied by this 1 in front that we like don't see, but it's there. So we have 3 square root 10 over root 2 times root 2, which is root 4, which is 2. And so that would be the answer for this problem. For this problem here, another 30, 60, 90 right triangle, which means I'm going to, um, what am I going to do? Uh, well, I mean, this is different. I'm going to use my special right triangles because I know that opposite the 90 degrees is equal uh, to 2A. So if I say that 6 root 3 equals 2A, all I have to do to solve for A, which is going to be opposite the 30, is I have to divide by 2. So I'm going to divide by 2. And now I have a is equal to 3 root 3. So now this side, opposite the 30, is 3 root 3. Now, in order to find what's opposite the 60, if you recall, that's a root 3. Well, if a is 3 root 3, you're going to plug that right in there to a. And so I'm going to have 3 root 3 times root 3. And so that's going to be 3 times 3, which is 9. So x is equal to 9. OK? Uh, the other option for doing this, and I'm just going to show you using trigonometry, all right, because you know trigonometry now and you can use that, is this, that put yourself at an angle, there you are, all right, and you're trying to find the opposite side and you have the hypotenuse. Well, that's going to be sine again. So if I have the opposite sine, right, opposite side and the hypotenuse, then I can use sine. So I would say sine of 60 is equal to x over 6 root 3. And then when I cross multiply, I get x equals 6 root 3 times whatever sine of 60 is. And so I'm going to do that on my calculator, 6 root 3 times uh, sine of 60. So I'm going to go, let me clear this, um, 6 root 3, so root 3. And I'm going to multiply that times sine of 60. And then enter. And I get 9, obviously. Same answer. You have to get the same answer. If you do it, even, it doesn't matter which way you do it. You still need to get the same answer. So that's going to equal to 9. So either way, x equals 9. Um, for this problem here, I would, um, this is a special right triangle again. This is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Opposite the 30 we call A. Opposite the 90 is 2A. So like I could actually just set this equal to 2A. A is what? 40 divided by 2, which is 20, which makes this 20. And then across from the 60 is going to be 20 root 3. So let's just say that you did this by... Um, you know, special right triangles, but that when you went to look at your answer on a multiple choice test, that that answer wasn't there. That 20 root 3 is not there. You know that you can make this into a decimal by multiplying 
20 times root 3. So what I would then do is I would go, well, what's 20? And then I'm going to use parentheses uh, times root 3. So I'm going to go second root, plug in my root 3, move that over, close my parentheses, and then hit enter. So my decimal approximation is about 34.6. So this would be um, for y would be also an option of what I just say. I just forgot. 34.6. 34.6. And that's your, and that's why. That's the same value as 20 root 3. You're just writing this a different way. Okay. Um, solve for the missing variables. Again, this is, these are special right triangles. 10, 10, 10 root 2. Okay. Again, you forget the little, the little shortcuts. That's fine. You can put yourself at the angle right here and go, well, first of all, I want to find this opposite side and I have the adjacent side. So that's tangent. So you're going to go tangent of 45 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent. And you're going to cross multiply. You're going to get x equals 10 times whatever tangent of 45 degrees is, which by the way, it's 1. And so you would get x equals 10 times 1, which is 10. Again, same thing. Now, to find the third side, you have options of using um, Pythagorean theorem, meaning you can go 10 squared plus 10 squared is equal to that number y squared. And then, so that's what, 100 plus 100, which is 200 equals y squared. And then 200, when I square root both sides, I get uh, root 2 times root 100 is equal to y, which is 10 root 2. So lots of options. Whatever works best for you is the way you should do it. Okay. Um, for this problem here, now that I shrunk this so much I can't see it. Um, for this problem here, these are both 30, 60, 90 right triangles. So look at it this way. Okay, you've got x, x, x root 2. See this? This is x root 2. Which means that this should be 3, 3, 3 root 2. Opposite the 30 degree, we call A. Opposite the 90 is 2A, so that would be 6. So opposite the 60, which is this angle here, is going to be A root 3. So A root 3. A, if A is opposite the 30 and that's 3, then my answer is going to be 3 root 3. Um, the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle. Now remember, an isosceles triangle has two sides congruent. The only two triangles that you can draw what we call an altitude down to the base that cuts that base into two equal parts and makes a perfect right angle straight down is an isosceles triangle and an equilateral triangle. Um, it says that the vertex angle, which is this angle at the top, these two angles down here, which are congruent, we call those base angles. But the angle at the top is the vertex angle, and that's going to be 60 degrees. So these are both 60, um, which means this angle down here, which is the same as that, actually is 30. Okay, it says the base length, so the whole length, the base length is 18, which then means this side is 9. Find the length of the altitude. So they want the length of the side opposite the 30 degree. So option A is to take the angle that you know, and you know this is 30, 60, 90. I'm going to do the shortcut, which means I'm going to take my answer, which is 9. I'm going to divide by 3 and multiply by root 3, which gives me this value here of 3 root 3. And then I would technically be done with the problem. However, if I didn't want to do it that way and I'm like, I love trig, I'm going to use trig, put yourself at one of the angles, not the right angle, and then go, hey, I'm trying to find this side here opposite of me, and I have the adjacent side, okay? And so what uses opposite and adjacent? Well, that's tangent. So you would say tangent of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side, and then you're going to cross multiply. You get x equals 9 times tangent of 30 degrees, and so x is equal to, let's see, 9 times tangent of 30, oops, hold on, tangent of 30 times 9, and I get 5.2. So this is about 5.2, all right? And so x is about 5.2, that's what I got, but remember, 3 root 3 also is 5.2. 
So if they ask you to put your answer in exact form, you would have to write it like this, three root three. But if you wrote it in um, decimal form, it would be uh, 5.2, okay? Uh, next question says solve for x. Now these aren't special right triangles. The only two special right triangles that you know are 30, 60, 90s and 45, 45, 90s. So these are not special right triangles, which means you are just gonna put yourself somewhere um, I'm going to put myself at this angle and I want to find X. This is X. This is my hypotenuse. This is my opposite side because it's from opposite from what angle you are standing at. And then this right here is my adjacent side. I'm trying to find that. So for me, for this problem, you know, you've got kind of like a gift because you have two options. I option A would be just to say, um, opposite and adjacent. So I could say tangent of 51 degrees is equal to the opposite side, 14, over the adjacent side. Option two for this problem, right, I could say cosine of 51 degrees because what uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So cosine of 51 is equal to the adjacent side, which is what we're trying to find, over the hypotenuse. And so cross-multiplying we're gonna get x times uh, one, which is x, I'm not, I don't need to write that. Um, and then we're gonna say equals to 18 times cosine of 51 degrees. So um, 18 times cosine of 51. So I'm gonna go cosine of 51 degrees equals, and then I'm gonna go times uh, 18, one eight, and I'm gonna get 11.3, 11.3. And so this value for x right here, x is about 11.3. That's my value for x. And either, whether I used um, this one, which was tangent, which I didn't solve, but I, that's another option, um, I could have used this way or I could have used this. Now, just keep in mind too, I also could have found this other angle over here, which is 39 degrees, and put myself here and then done maybe opposite over adjacent or opposite over hypotenuse. So you, you know, there's so many different options here. Okay, um, for this problem here, um, I've got a 50, This these two have to add up to be um, 90. So therefore this could be 40 degrees if I wanted to, but I'm gonna just put myself at the angle that they gave me. And I have, I'm trying to find the opposite side I have the hypotenuse. What uses the opposite side or and the hypotenuse is sine. So I would say sine of the angle, oops, and I need to put 50 degrees in. So sine of the angle, the angle always comes after the word. Sine of the angle is equal to x over 75. I'm gonna cross multiply and, and do keep in mind, this is work shown. If you don't show this work, you are not gonna get full credit. You're not gonna get credit. Um, you have to have work shown in order to receive credit. It is not enough to have the right answer if you do not have work shown, okay? All right, kind of mean, but that's the way it is. So 75 times uh, sine of 50, so sine of 50 degrees. And so X is approximately, uh, I'm gonna go seven, I'm gonna go, actually, I'm just gonna go sine of 50 first. So sine of 50, get my answer, times that by 75, use your calculator, you get 57.5. So X is about 57.5. Okay. Um, for these two problems here, for this one problem actually, um, right here, I wanna use, I wanna try to find the angle. I'm not trying to find um, the sides, I already have all the sides. Um, I wanna find the angle. And so in order to find an angle, remember, you're going to have to use inverse. Anytime you're trying to find an angle, you're going to use the inverse, which is arc sine, arc cosine, or arc tangent. So put yourself at the angle that you want to be at, that you're trying to find. And decide what do you have. Now for me, I have all three sides, which again is a gift, because you, if, if you have all three sides, you can then use sine, cosine, or tangent. All of them will work. So if I wanted to use sine, I would say sine of x, they, and I and personally, like I don't like this little x degree, but I like to use theta. You can use theta. So sine of x degree is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So I'd say 80 over 100. All right. Option two, 
um, what I could do is I can find, um, I can also use cosine, right? Um, I could say, well, cosine of x degree is equal to the adjacent, the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So 60 over 100. And then lastly, I could have also said tangent of x uh, degree is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent. So 80 over 60. So regardless of what way that you do decide, you have so many options if you, if, if you are given all three sides. So to find x, to get isolate the x, to get it by itself, I'm going to solve this one. I'm going to move the cosine over to the other side. The act of doing that is called arc, arc cosine. I'm writing inverse, but I'm actually writing arc, you know, I'm saying arc cosine, but I'm writing, yeah, the inverse. So here we go. So we go arc cosine, that's, that's what I'm writing, arc cosine, that's what that means. Cosine to the negative one power, which is an inverse, is actually saying arc cosine of 60 over 100. And yeah, I do know that this does reduce, that's irrelevant, it doesn't matter, you don't need to do that. Cosine, excuse me, x is now going to be about, and now we have to go arc cosine of 60 over 100. And the way you find arc cosine is it's above the cosine. So you're going to go second cosine of 60 divided by 100 and enter. And I get 53.1 degrees. So that means that this angle right here that we're trying to find is actually 51.3 degrees. And box that up. Um, this is work shown. You have to show that. Um, for this problem on the top, oops. For this problem right here on the top right, your job is to find x. You put just put yourself at the angle here. Um, we're only using arc cosine, arc tangent, arc sine if we're trying to find the angle. That's the only time that you are trying to find that you are actually going to use arc or an inverse. Okay. Um, so therefore, we're going to just use regular sine, cosine, or tangent. So there, here I am. I have the opposite side. I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. So we're going to go, that's sine. So I'm going to go sine of 79 degrees equals 18 over x. I'm going to cross multiply. I get x times sine of 79 degrees is equal to 18. And then I'm going to divide both sides by sine of 79. So I get x equals uh, 18 divided by parentheses sine of 79 degrees. So that... 18, let's see, 18 divided, 18 divided by sine, I gotta use a parenthesis, sine of 79 is 18.3. So that means X is approximately 18.3. And you need to be very careful with this because remember, okay, that the hypotenuse is the longest side. And if this wasn't more than 18, we did something wrong. So this is about 18.3, which is more than the um, other side. So we're good. Um, a plane took off from the runway. So here's our plane taking off from the runway. Here's the plane. Um, let's just draw it in motion here. Okay. And it says the plane had flown 2,000 meters. It had covered a horizontal distance. That's this way of 1,800 meters. And find the measure of the angle of elevation. That's not this. This is just me making a right triangle. The angle of elevation is the angle that starts with the horizontal and actually goes up. So this right here is my angle of elevation. I'm going to call that theta. So find the angle of elevation. So if you put yourself at the angle that you're trying to find, this is the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent side. What? Ask yourself, what uses the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, and that's going to be cosine. Remember your mnemonic, okay? A and then H, that's what we're looking for. So we're going to go cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and that's 2,000. And remember, if I'm trying to find an angle, I do have to use arc or inverse, you know, right? So we have theta equals arc cosine of 1800 divided by 2000 and do that on your calculator um, I'm gonna go arc cosine so I have to go second cosine and that's gonna be 1800 divided by 2000 close the parentheses enter um, I get 25.8 degrees 
Um, keep in mind though, that if you are actually using um, Desmos Scientific Calculator and you're trying to find where's arc cosine, it's under the function button, okay? All right, anyway, so theta is approximately, I just lost that, what did it say? I, I don't know. Uh, 25.8, okay. Okay, uh, 11 says a cliff is 80 meters above sea level. So here's C, um, we've got a cliff, let's say there's the cliff, it's 80 meters above sea level, okay. So, I mean, they're not talking about a C, but anyway, so we have 80. And then it says the angle of depression, now remember, the angle of depression is always based on a horizontal, people. There's my horizontal. So when I'm talking about the angle of depression, that's the angle that I'm talking about, the one going down off of a horizontal. Just like the angle of elevation that's going up off of a horizontal, so is the angle of depression. It says the angle of depression is 35 degrees. So that's this angle from here to here. So I'm going to drop this down like that. It says to the nearest meter, how far is the boat? And oh, we have a boat. Let me make a boat. I like making boats. Here's the boat. Okay. So uh, what's, what are we asking? Um, how far is the boat from the base of the cliff? So this is what we want right there. And we know that, you know, it's water, but it's a right angle. So what you need to remember is this. Unless you're going to make this into a triangle like this here, um, what you should remember is that horizontals are always going to be parallel. And if this is 35 degrees, then this angle down here also is 35 degrees. And now that you put yourself at the boat, um, there you are right there, hi, okay, um, then you have tangent, right? So you, that's opposite and adjacent. So you're going to say tangent of 35 degrees equals 80 over x. I'm going to cross multiply and I'm going to get x times whatever tangent of 35 is, that equals 80. So therefore, x equals 80 divided by tangent of 35 degrees. Please make sure that you use parentheses again, or you're not going to get the right answer. 80 divided by tangent of 35, okay? So we're going to go 80 divided by, make sure you use parentheses, tangent, tangent of 35 degrees, close the parentheses, uh, 114.3, so it looks like the boat is 114 meters, 114 meters uh, away from the cliff. So this is about, and you know, you're using an approximation because you rounded. All right, uh, number 12, ladder leans against the building. So here's the building. Uh, my ladder is here. There's the ladder. Um, it makes an angle of 49 degrees with the ground. So that means this down here is 49 degrees. Um, it reaches a point on the building 12 meters above ground. Here's that. Uh, find the length of the ladder. So this is, you will put yourself at the angle that you're using. You have the opposite side. You're trying to find the hypotenuse which one uses the hypotenuse in the opposite side? It would be um, sine. So you would say sine of 49 degrees is equal to 12 over x. We're going to cross multiply. We get x times sine of 49 degrees, and that equals 12. So x is equal to 12 divided by sine of 49 degrees. Make sure you use parentheses when you do that. So do that on your own. We're going to go 12 divided by parentheses sine of 49 in the parentheses, I get 15.9. So X is about 15.9. Uh, I know that the latter, it says round to the nearest meter. So that would then be 16. Um, next question says solve for theta. Again, put yourself at the angle and you're here. And remember, if I'm trying to find an angle, that means I have to use inverse. Um, I have the hypotenuse, I have the adjacent side, which therefore means that I have to use um, cosine. So we're going to go cosine of the angle, which is x degree, 
is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Oops, I need to put a number there. So that's going to be 15 over 20. I'm going to solve for x, and that's going to be x theta or degree is equal to arc cosine of 15 over 20. And on your calculator, you've got arc cosine. So we're going to go second cosine of 15 divided by 20. And that value, oh, I didn't like that. What, what it didn't like? Uh-oh, hold on. Let's see. Oh, it didn't like something there. Okay, let's do this again. Arc cosine, so arc cosine of, let's see here, what did it say? 15 divided by 20, so 15, let's see, divided by 2, 0, and you get 41.4. Uh, yeah, 41.4. So that means that theta, or the angle, so x degree is about 41.4 four degrees. And so that would be the angle. And remember, if you ever want to find the other angles in the triangle, right, you know that because that the sum of the angles are is 180. But if you already have the right angle, that's minus 90. So that means that this angle here and this angle here in a right triangle have to have a sum of 90 degrees. So once I have this angle right here, all I have to do is say 90 degrees minus 41.4 degrees, and so 90 minus 41.1 is going to give me 48.9. So that other angle is 48.9 degrees if they wanted that. Okay, so hey, good luck on your chapter five quiz. Um, this is, uh, love this, this, of course, another Marvel movie, but Deadpool. Um, also, there's one little section where Brad Pitt was actually in this movie with the uh, um, and he was the vanisher. He was the guy that you couldn't see who had like a cameo. And he just for one, like one second was, um, you could see his face just one minute and then he was gone. So anyway, um, thanks so much for watching. Hope this helped you uh, to study for your quiz. See you on Thursday and Friday.